Welcome, in this video I'm going to be talking about the desktop environment. The aim is that once you've watched this video you will actually understand what the desktop environment is. So we'll start by talking about what is a desktop environment. So you're looking at one right now. The desktop environment is a graphical user interface, so I use graphics in order to navigate my way through the operating system. When I talk about graphics, I'm talking specifically about things like icons. These are icons here that I can click on to open up applications. I'm talking about folders here where I can store my files. I'm talking about windows, so I can open up a window like this and open up different windows like this that load on top of each other uh, to see different applications or different directories on my uh, operating system. Also, as part of a desktop environment, I get the facility for help. So this is the help center here for Mac OS X Mavericks. And I also get toolbars which I can access as well. So that's what the desktop environment is. It's a graphical user interface. If we're comparing a graphical user interface, we might say, well, if we didn't have graphical user interfaces that uses these windows and that uses these icons and that uses these folders, then what would we have? Well we'd have something like this, which is a command line interface. This is called Terminal. Um, Windows um, command line interface is called Command Prompt if you want to access that. But what I could do with this is if I, if I just show you here, if I want to navigate my way through folders using a graphical user interface, which is what most of you would do, you would simply open up a finder window like this. Here are all my folders in my home drive. If I want to go into a folder, for example, the um, desktop folder, I would just click on the desktop folder. Here's all the files and folders in there. If I want to go to the, um, the zip folder, I click on the zip folder, and there's all the files and folders in there. So it's a very much a point-and-click environment. Whereas if I was using a command line interface and I wanted to do exactly the same, I would do something like this. I would just type in ls to find out... Um, a list of the files and folders that are in the directory that I'm currently in. So that's just like me clicking on Mark Wood here and you can see these folders are exactly the same as these folders listed in the command line interface here. Uh, what my might want to do then is type in CD desktop which and press enter which is exactly the same as me clicking on desktop here. You can see a list of the files and folders in the graphical user interface. If I want to see them on the command line, type in ls again. And again, these are exactly the same files and folders in the um, command line interface as you can see in the graphical user interface. So uh, when computers were first developed, they weren't on these graphics and we did actually have to navigate our way through the operating system using this command line interface. But obviously, as um, computer hardware has developed, so is the software, and we're now able to have these graphical user interfaces. So back onto the desktop environment. Just said, desktop environment is a graphical user interface that allows us to change certain settings of, of the operating system that we're using. So as you can see, like I've already mentioned, I'm using Mac OS operating system. This is Mac OS X Mavericks. Um, obviously, there's other operating systems like uh, Windows that most of you will probably be familiar with. Uh, Windows have Windows 7, they have Windows 8. There's also uh, Linux operating systems such as Ubuntu. Uh, which is free if any of you want to download that operating system onto your computer. Um, and like I said, what the desktop environment allows us to do is it allows us to make certain changes to the settings of how we interact and use our operating system. So on a Mac system, if I were to go down to these system preferences down here, and it tends to be the control panel on the Windows operating system, uh, Windows desktop, we can change certain features that I'm more already sure that most of you know. So for example, I might want to click and change my desktop background. If I want to do that, I can just change my desktop background like that. I'm just going to keep it blue, I think, just because it's easier on the eyes. What other things can I do? I can change the icon size um, here. So to do that, um, in Mac OS X, I would go to the Finder, I would go to View, show View Options. If I wanted to change the um, icon, uh, the folder size, I can do that. Uh, what else can we do? Also in the system preferences, I could change things like the dock. Um, this is the dock on a uh, Mac OS operating system. So in this desktop environment, the dock is quite large. I might want to shrink that and make it much smaller. 
uh, I could change the screen resolution so I won't do that because this video will probably all mess up if I do that but if I wanted to change my screen resolution you can see currently I'm, I'm having a resolution that allows me to have large text if I wanted more space I could actually change the resolution so it looks like everything's got smaller on my screen but I can actually get more on my screen um, if I had a mouse attached I could change the mouse settings so the mouse is more sensitive or less sensitive I could change um, what else could I change here so on the desktop as screensaver I could change the screensaver that appears when I land leave the machine to stand still for a while uh, I could change the brightness for example on the display I can make it darker I can make it lighter I can play around with the sounds so if I wanted to for example, I'm recording my voice now using the microphone. If I didn't want it to record at such volume, I could turn this down. And again, if I didn't want to have my speakers so loud, I could turn the volume down here as well. Um, so I've already talked about the things you could do with the folders. We can also, the desktop environment allows us to, for example, rename folders. So if I didn't want this to be called screencasts, I could simply um, right click if you're on a PC or um, two fingers down and click. I'm on my laptop on a Mac operating system at the minute. So if I do that on this folder, get info, and here it gives me all the information about these folders. I could click on the name and extension, and I could say, Well, I want to actually call this videos. And now I've renamed the folder. What else can I do? I could delete a folder if I want. I could create new folders. So if I just right click on the desktop environment, go new folder. I get a new folder here. I could also rename it by just clicking once on the folder name. This is a new folder. And if I don't want that folder, I can right click on it and I can move it to the trash or delete it if you're using Windows. So I can move folders if I want. I can literally move a folder within a folder. So if to do that, again, it's just a drag and drop. Let's say, for example, I wanted this videos folder inside the zip folder or the zip folder inside the videos folder. Open up the videos folder drag the zip folder inside it and now that zip folder has moved and it's into this videos folder instead I can move it back if I want and there we go so I can move folders, delete folders, I can copy a folder if I want so I can um, I can copy this folder by again right clicking on it copy zip click anywhere on the desktop and paste it and now I have a copy of that folder I can move them, delete them, copy them, rename them I've already talked about we can have the um, help center. So the desktop environment provides us with a help center in case there's anything that we need to know that we don't know how to do. We could just type that in here. So for example, I might want to find out how to resize um, icons, resize an object, resize, resize, see what pops up. And I can use the help center here in order to Align and resize icons, click on that and it'll tell me how to do it. There we go. So what else can I do? Um, also on the system preferences I could do things like access the printer facilities. So for example I can set up a printer here. You can see I've got a printer set up and I've done that through the desktop environment, the system settings and clicked on printers and scanners. I can also um, access uh, network features such as um, the internet and Bluetooth and sharing files and folders. I can set up the date and time of my machine here just in case it's on the wrong time settings, whether it's the wrong date, for example. I can set up user accounts. So, for example, on this machine here, I only have one user actually using it, but I can set up user groups so I could have uh, someone else actually uh, have an account on here so they could log in and access just their files and folders rather than mine. I can set up yep, I can set up security settings, I can set up um, the security and privacy settings here. I can set those up. I can set up a uh, backup. So I've got this time machine which allows me to back up my work if I want to do that. I'll back up the whole um, computer if I want to do that as well. And what else can I do? Oh, within this desktop environment, let's imagine that for example, um, I want to locate a folder that's deep within another folder. So, for example, I just create a folder inside SIP2, 
call it test, and then inside test folder, I create a test2. And let's say, for example, it can be quite um, tedious to say, well, I want to access the test2 folder, so I'm going to go in here, in here, in here, and it takes me that long to get there. So what I could do is I could set up an alias, which is basically a shortcut. If I right-click on this, and I can then make an alias, and then drag that here onto my desktop, what I could do now is rather than having to click through here, through here, through here to get to the folder, I could just double click this and it takes me straight into the same folder. So all of these things that I've just showed you, they, they can all be done because we have this desktop environment. And yeah, it's very intuitive, It's very um, so that means it's very easy to use, and it obviously is for beginners a much more easier way of navigating through our operating system as opposed to this command line interface here. So that was understanding the desktop environment and what you could do with the desktop environment.